Hi, I'm Lou and today the crazy hacker in me wants to make an oxygen machine. In parts, we'll need a container of warm water, baking soda, some wire, an extension cord, and a full wave rectifier. These are available for about $6 on Amazon. At the heart of our project is this full wave rectifier. We put in alternating current on these two screws with squiggly lines and it outputs direct current here and here on these screws with the plus and minus. We will use that direct current to split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Start by cutting your extension cord like this. We only need the end with the plug on it. Now break these two apart and strip about an inch of insulation off each one. I made little hooks on the wires and it doesn't really matter which one goes on which side so just put them in like this and tighten them down with a screwdriver. Strip your other wires and put them on the other side. It really doesn't matter which is plus or minus just so long as you know which one it is. I'm going to choose red for plus. A word of warning, this is 120 volts here and it will shock you so I would suggest putting tape over it. Let's start with an experiment. I just put my wires under water and we'll plug it in. You can see the minus side is bubbling away there. That's the hydrogen and the plus side isn't giving us much which is the oxygen which is what we want. So let's throw in some baking soda and stir this up. Make sure it's unplugged when you do this by the way and this is going to actually increase the conductivity of the water. So now look what happens when we plug it in. We're getting nice bubbles off the oxygen side which is what we want. I've stripped about 18 inches off both the red and the black wire and now we're going to use a pencil and wrap these around into a spring formation. All we really did here was increase the surface area of the copper to give the hydrogen and oxygen more places to jump off. And now we get way more gas production. The problem we run into right away is that oxygen coming off this coil actually oxidizes the copper and then it doesn't conduct anymore. Here I tried it on a larger scale and it looks really cool, but we're going to go to stainless steel screws that don't oxidize. Start with house electrical wiring and strip off the outer sheath exposing these wires. I stripped some of the black wire and wound it around all these stainless steel screws. Here we are in a five gallon bucket and we have the hydrogen coming off on that side with copper and the oxygen coming off on that side with stainless steel. Now we need to separate the gases into two different tubes. I switched to a two gallon bucket because we don't need that much room and I have these three inch diameter pipes that are going to help us separate the gases. There are the electrodes down in the tubes and you want to leave plenty of room down here underneath so the ions can transfer back and forth. Absolutely don't touch the electrodes or stick your hand in the water when the power is on. You will get shocked or worse. There's our hydrogen and there's our oxygen. I cut slots in the sides so these wires would fit flush and then I drilled holes in the sides here so that my tubes would fit in tightly here and then we'll tape these shut. So my blood oxygen is normally at a 95% saturation. After breathing some oxygen I'm up to 98%. And of course we can't leave out our hydrogen gas. The water really heats up quickly. That's only been 10 minutes and it's near boiling. So in the end, we have a great way to oxidize copper, a great way to heat water, and a decent way to make oxygen. Thanks for watching.